welcome to Talking Italian in conversation with La Scala and QPAC. This conversation is part of the 2018 QPAC International Series. It's our intention today to give you a bit of an introduction to both companies, to their role in their respective cities, Milan and Brisbane, and also to talk a little bit about the impact of a culture and place. So in mentioning place, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we gather on here today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Could I please uh, welcome uh, to the stage this morning, Mrs. Maria De Freda, General Manager, La Scala. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie molte. Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning to everybody. Maestro Frederic Olivieri, Ballet Director, La Scala. <laughs> Thank you very much. QPAC Chief Executive, Mr. John Kotsis. Thank you. And Francesca, welcome. Francesca. So I wanted to start off this morning talking a little bit about cities and cultural life. La Scala opened in 1778 after a fire had burned down the original theatre. And almost two centuries later, in 1985, QPAC opened here in Brisbane. Now, both of these institutions uh, have a really important role in contributing to the vibrancy and the cultural lives of their cities. Mrs. De Freda, could I ask you to tell us a little bit about the relationship between La Scala and Milan? Ma è indubbiamente un rapporto molto profondo fra La Scala e Milano. Uh, si pensi che eh, durante la guerra la scala fu colpita dai bombardamenti alleati e eh, il primo intervento che il sindaco Greppi ha fatto a Milano prima ancora di ricostruire le case è stato quello di ricostruire il teatro perché proprio i Milan per i milanesi è come la loro casa e questo rapporto profondo che c'è fra eh, il teatro e la sua città è davvero unico eh, in Italia, cioè toccare la scala è un po' come toccare la mamma a Milano. È una relazione molto profonda che la scala ha con la città. Se pensi che durante la guerra, quando tutto è stato bombardato in Milano, hanno voluto costruire il teatro prima di costruire le case, quindi è una relazione molto forte che il teatro ha sempre avuto with uh, the people and in the city of Milano. Eh, non solo, ma anche quando il teatro fu eh, costruito nel 1778 per volere di Maria Teresa d'Austria, le grandi famiglie milanesi hanno partecipato attivamente alla costruzione del teatro eh, e questa è una tradizione che si ripete ancora adesso perché nonostante nel 1920, per volere di Toscanini, la Scala fu trasformata in un teatro pubblico, in un ente autonomo, eh, e poi dopo questa strada venne seguita anche da altre istituzioni culturali in Italia. If you think mm. that, um, Scusa Francesca, ma spesso mi dimentico, <ride> mi dimentico che, <ride> che, <ride> che mi devi tradurre. <ride> Certo, certo. Ho detto che quando la scala, fin da quando fu costruita Maria de, da Maria Teresa d'Austria, però le grandi famiglie milanesi hanno dato un contributo diretto alla costruzione della scala in order to um, reconstruct the theatre. Ed è questa è una tradizione And che nonostante la trasformazione poi in teatro pubblico the, e quindi, um, uh, of the theater, quindi from col venir meno della proprietà dei palchi da parte delle grandi the famiglie big milanesi, big families, the big of, uh, that time, eh, ancora um, adesso i abbonati dei well, palchi della scala rappresentano ancora le, um, le, diciamo, le antiche famiglie milanesi che a suo tempo that erano that proprietarie dei palchi contributed to the um, construction of the, um, of the Scala and at that time they were the owners of um, boxes in, in the theatre 
I also wanted to add something very important from a historical point of view. In a little while, a book is going to be published. It's going to be written by a collaborator of the Scala, Gay Puccini, who is responsible for the publication of the theatre. And it's going to be talking about the importance of the um, families who contributed to the reconstruction and it's going to be published this autumn. Thank you. John, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the connection that Brisbane has with QPAC. Um, it's interesting, Rebecca, because when we think about this site, we think about QPAC as having opened in 1985 and that certainly was the case. But I think what's really significant is the site itself on which the cultural centre was built and that it has always been a performance space, a storytelling space for our Indigenous communities as far back as we can tell. Um, in, in more contemporary times, um, I think when you look from the city across the QPAC, you see that QPAC, the facade of QPAC, has become very much the kind of icon, I think, of the South Bank. That's my biased view. Um, but when you look at the attendances that the whole precinct has and that, that we have within that precinct, you can see that QPAC is really starting to, or has, very much connected with the city and the state. I think it's fair to say that it's widely acknowledged now that culture plays a really significant role in the lives of people and communities and places. You, John, you mentioned storytelling. Theatres are places for stories to be told. But in the 21st century, there are so many places for that to happen. You have both mentioned that both La Scala and QPAC are about to undergo massive expansions or renovations. Why are theatres important in this century when there are so many places to tell stories? Why are theatres still important? Ma indubbiamente sono un luogo di aggregazione, sono un luogo di formazione, un luogo di rapporto. And theatres represent not just operas, but in our case, operas, ballets, have also the function of promoting the knowledge of local culture and recreate the conditions so that this continues also for the future generations. So it's very important that the formation, the Scala, for example, but not, not just the Scala, all the big institutions has an academy, for example, which forms not just the artistic figures, but everyone who is involved around the theatre. And all these are very important for the important, are very important for the functionality of theatres. The academy is called um, is 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 a place where people can train to become a, a very um, professional in everything that regards the the theatre itself. Moreover, the function of forming the public is very important. Not only the public that normally visits theatres and attends theatres and those families that we were talking about before, but also the young people, schools, all kinds of associations. So this is an activity that keeps alive these institutions and people get to love these institutions thanks to these organisations. So it's the responsibility to make sure that everyone in gets involved and everyone gets to love and fall in love with uh, everything that goes around the theatre. John, why is it important that people come together in a space like a theatre? Um, well, if we just look at the technical side of it, first of all, a great public institution needs to reflect the community that it serves. Right? And then secondly, if you just look at the way we're sitting at the moment, um, one of the things that the theatre's always done is allowed us to connect as a community. And the fact that our, sheet, our seats are shaped the way they're shaped at the moment in that 
um, cross style allows all of us to be connect with each other through our peripheral vision and with what's going on stage. So what, what the arts allows us to do is allows us to go into a very private space in a very public way. And I think that that's one of the things that contemporary technology doesn't let us do. I always think that performing live or experiencing a live performance is something that's in that moment. And that's what's special about it, because it is ephemeral and it will always have that quality. But it's the connection we have as an audience and with the, with the artist, that's what gives us that kind of um, special place, I think. And I think that'll last for a long time. Mrs. Last for 2,000 years, at least. You know. Mrs DeFreda mentioned the word responsibility. Does QPAC have a responsibility to its communities? I think it does. All public institutions have a um, responsibility to s serve the community in which they um, uh, serve, in which they live. And part of that service is to reflect the community as it is. And also there's a leadership role that we take on board to actually raise issues um, and help the community resolve those issues. I suppose our roles as directors um, of these places is the custodianship. Um, and we must never think that it's our sole voice that must rule, but it's actually reflecting the voice of the community. Thank you. I just want to touch a little bit now on the architecture of these two amazing buildings, uh, both of them heritage listed, albeit two centuries apart. But people are often surprised by how uh, modest the facade of La Scala is, and certainly people frequently comment on the facade of QPAC, uh, the brutalist architecture, people either love it or hate it. Uh, but arguably, on the inside, La Scala is one of the world's grandest theatres, and I think John would claim QPAC is one of the most functional. <laughs> Mrs. DeFreda, can I ask you, how is the architecture of your building important, both symbolically as well as practically? Beh, la scala come è noto, è stata Scala was projected by the architect Pier Marini. Marini. It's a theatre of the 1700s, at the end of the 1700s, that's when it was um, designed. In effetti, la, dall From the outside, posso raccontare un'impressione mia I, personale. I can tell you something sono, about what I Milano, feel. I'm Campana. not from Milan. I come from the sono region of Campania, a, a small town near Naples. Eh, e la prima volta che sono a the first Milano, time I went to Milano, oltre 45 anni more than 45 years ago, I was used to see the San Carlo of Naples, which is older than the Scala, of about 40 years. But it looks more like a theatre of the 1800s, whereas, whereas Scala, the um, outside of the Scala is a little bit more um, simple in its, in its details. First thing I said was, oh, is this all? what the scholar is about. <laughs> At that moment, I would have never thought that one day I was going to be working at that theatre. Actually, that happened a few months later. And my adventure at the Scala was meant to start, was meant to go on for only a few months. Something that was going to go on just after my studies, it was offered to me just like a casual opportunity. I'm not going to tell you how many centuries I've been working there now, but otherwise you're going to find out my age. But I do remember Still to today, that every time I go into the theatre, I still remember the first time, the emotion I felt the first time I saw the inside of the theatre. And I remember that I was speechless. And still today, I get emotioned every time I walk in. Since it was built, Stendhal considered the Scala one of the biggest in the world, not only for, not only for uh, how big it is, but also the history 
per that it has, not la città di Milano, for Italy mondo, only, but ma anche per le all over the world for its dimensions eh, as well. Cioè che io la, ho avuto poi now la that I've had the chance of faccio, working di, there, di tutto il and mondo e di thanks to my job, which is visiting many, many eh, theatres, I must admit in conto, il that mio di even though mine is a personal opinion, and eh, being Italian, sangue, è molto, molto it seems <laughs> normal that I say what I'm, what, what, what I'm saying, but teatro, I do have a very strong connection che, with the theatre, and it's very hard eh, to find this enorme, big eh, stage, this Fra, eh, la torre e, this diciamo, height la parte from più the stage scenico. to the top. Eh, uno non entra in if scala, you don't walk non into the scala, you eh. can't, you can't non see, you can't understand, and you can't describe these emotions. Provare. You need to see it in order to understand. Thank you. John, you've got a pretty special relationship with the architecture of QPAC as well. I mean, I believe you had the opportunity to walk through this building as it was being built originally in the mid 80s. I did. Um, I was teaching at Brisbane State High School and I was offered a tour um, through the building when it was a construction site. And I can remember really clearly walking through the concert hall um, with no roof on it and through the Lyric Theatre with no roof on it. But the concert hall was actually more formed at the time. Um, and personally, I actually loved the shape of the concert hall. I know all our theatres work. I mean, it's interesting. Like, I think both theatres are reflections of their time. You know, Robin Gibson was, was given the task of um, crea creating the precinct. Um, and imagine having to do that just after um, Sydney had opened the Opera House, which right from day one was seen as one of the world's icons. You know? So, you know the great joke in Australia. Australia has one fantastic performing arts centre. The outside is in Sydney, the inside is in Brisbane, and the car park is in Adelaide, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it, it, it's very hard, it, like, we live with this building and we know that its external architecture is very alienating. It's very hard to find the front door. Which, where's the front door? But you all know that when we work in here, one of the wonderful qualities of this building is its functionality. And if, if the architect has given us a great gift, it's the functionality of the building. It's the way that our loading dock services one, one level of all our stages. The, the relationship between all our stages and the audience are fantastic. You know? um, but having said that, I remember the first time that I walked into La Scala, I went to visit Mrs De Freda and she was giving me a tour. And the first time I stepped in, I was actually with Leo, um, Leo Schofield, and we walked into the theatre. He'd been there before and I hadn't. And it was totally overwhelming because there was people working on stage. There was a whole lot of stagehands working on stage and we were at the back of the stalls. And it was just one of those um, moments that I'll never forget because it was, it's awesome is the only way to describe it. You know, having had the build-up of what it was and then to actually be in the... In the the theatre, it's just absolutely breathtaking. Thank you. I'd like to talk for a minute now about this amazing international series that's coming up in November. It'll be the Australian debut for La Scala, which is amazing. Uh, and the company's going to bring two productions, Don Quixote and Giselle. Uh, Maestro Olivieri, I'm just going to veer off course for one second for our planned conversation because I was reminded at the beginning that, um, in fact, you were... We'll stop talking about Brisbane and Milan for a moment and go to Paris. Yeah. Uh, you were actually at the Paris Opera Ballet when yeah. Nureyev Box, created yeah. this yeah. Uh, production of Don Quixote. Long time ago. <laughs> Could you just give us a... Tell us a little bit about that. That's pretty amazing. No, no, long time ago, yeah. Um, I have a part, of, it's like another life, it's like uh, two life, but it's dance. No, I, was, I was in Paris Opera and my director was, uh, at the moment, was Rudolf Nureyev. And uh, when I was in Paris Opera, it was uh, always a discussion and uh, the idea to come in, in Australia to do a tour with the company. And it never happened when I was there, after they come. And after, so I leave the Paris Opera, I entered in uh, Monte Carlo Ballet when they created the, the company. 
and that's two because it's a two company, and there was a project to come in Australia. And uh, but after ten years, no, no two Australians. So I, after I decided to finish my career with John Meyer, and uh, and two, it was a preview to come in Australia. I never come in Australia. At the end, <coughs> finally, I r I would come in Australia as very director. So I'm, I'm really happy about 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 it. But this, that's a story. It's a long story. After many years, yeah. Yeah. Paris. 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 <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about both of these productions that yeah. uh, the ballet company is going to mm. perform here in Brisbane? No, the ballet company at the moment, you are a 95 dancer. It's a really, for me, uh, one, one of the best companies in the world because it's, uh, I know, uh, it's a very talented company. We have a very great repertory and uh, we have a very important season in theatre and uh, always, at least every year in season, uh, two international big tour, we try. I push for it, and it's always interesting, important for the company to have this kind of experience outside of the theater. But uh, first of all, it's uh, the, the the season in the, comp in the in the our theater, and uh, I just present the season for next season. So we do wolf works, and, and uh, we have done it, and the creation of Prejocage, so that I'm really happy about the two contemporary new productions for Theatre Scala. Here we would come with Giselle, uh, very ballet romantic, very traditional ballet, but uh, it's uh, of the version of Yvette Chauviret, it was a Toile of Paris Opera. And uh, it's a very beautiful version, fantastic sets uh, from uh, original from Alexander Benoit, and the uh, first act and the second act when the the curtain open of the second night, it's really a magic moment with the light and uh, it's really painting, it's all f fashion, all the, uh, all the way, all the way, and uh, it's wonderful. So that, uh, but the company is very good, but all the production, it's a fantastic uh, piece, uh, ballet. It's a romantic ballet in two acts. And uh, the other ballet is Don Quixote from a version of Rudolf Nureyev in three acts, but the music of Minkus. And um, that is... Uh, uh, a ballet, a brilliant ballet with technically and uh, with a funny, funny part and uh, it's really light but really important for the company. It's, it's difficult to to uh, to do this ballet, to have a... Mm -hmm. Nouria Ballet, he really changed the choreography. All the ballet he has uh, do, do again the choreography. He really uh, put a lot uh, for the corps de ballet. For Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, and Don Q, and Cinderella, and uh, Nutcracker. So it's very important for the core ballet to have uh, uh, this production. So we present these two ballet for the classical ballet. That yeah. sounds like quite an amazing combination. John, can I ask you, <coughs> the international series has been running for eight or nine years now. It's been a long time in conversation with La Scala. Um, why are they next? Um, a couple of reasons, Rebecca. Um, I think we forget that Australia is a long way from anywhere. And so to ask a company to travel here, it's a, quite a big undertaking. And I think the company needs to trust. You know, to, I think there's 130 or 120 people in the party that come here. So it takes a lot of trust from the, the company leaders to say, yes, we'll sign up to the tour, to know that they're coming to a place that's going to be safe, the production values are going to be high, and also the accommodation of the artists is going to be safe and comfortable and allows them to work. So um, with th that's part of it. The other part of it is, is that these companies are very busy, as are we, and finding time in the schedule to align all that is the other big part of it. And, and the, probably the third part is making sure that we are able to address the audience demand. Um, I think what's really interesting about these two works is that they represent two different periods in the ballet world and um, I think they're going to be very well received. But there's also a little bit of serendipity in that as well. So in 2000, what we, when we started the international series, what we wanted to do was identify the best companies around the world and get them to come and live in residence here in Brisbane get them to spend two, two and a half weeks here and move among us so that um, we, not all Queenslanders can travel overseas, so we, but they can come to Brisbane. So the idea of bringing a company to Brisbane is to bring the audience to the company. So in the search, we obviously identified a whole lot of brands and um, 
This is where I have to introduce in Leo, in McRae and Leo Schofield. Because it's not just a matter of picking the right brands, it's actually making sure that at the time when the companies come, they are performing at their best. And so we began this conversation in 2012 with, with Maria. And um, I was there with Leo in Milan, and Maria was giving us a tour, had organised for us to do a tour of the building. And La Scala also has, Maria mentioned the academy, but also has a ballet school. And we were walking through, the comp walking through the building and Leo went off the beaten path a bit and walked past a studio where there were rehearsals. There was a class going on. And he called me back and he said, look at the quality of these dancers. They are fantastic. And so our initial conversation was about the idea of perhaps bringing the brand La Scala to Australia as an opera. But as we started to think about it, then the ballet become more and more prominent. Thank you. Uh, Maestro Olivier, if I could come back to you for a moment. Our audience today is largely QPAC staff um, and some of our members as well. We are going to be talking about this season non-stop for the next four or five months. Is there something that you could give us a little bit of a... Um, uh, inside tip that we could uh, use to look very expert for the next four or five months as we're talking about these two productions that you're going to bring? <laughs> for, first of all, it was difficult for us to come and for the principal dancer to come in this week. It was difficult because we just finished uh, Nouria Fromage with four performance and the performance were really um, nice because we have uh, this ballet school and the company together. At the end, we have a big defile and it was an amazing moment. And so now uh, we have one week of holiday, so they can come after we have performance of Don Quixote. No, that, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the ballet dancer, I, mean, I know 75% of the company, they are they're coming for the ballet school, so I, uh, they, they know me, so I, they know them from uh, 10 years old, so I don't know if they support me still, but... <laughs> So for me, it's always a big uh, moment. And we have new principal dancers, so surely there, was, there will be some uh, new first time that the dancer we dance uh, or Giselle or Don Quixote for, for the first time, surely. They don't know yet them, but me, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> don't yeah. tell them. So but uh, it's sure, because uh, we have new generation, we have done a, a concours to pass. There's new solist, new principal dancer. So it's very, the company at the moment, it's really, uh, I must say, I'm very proud to, to be direct this company and to be in Teatro La Scala. And the second thing I must say that when my, Maria talk about Scala, we feel that she loves Scala. I know her for many times and she really loves this theatre and all the people who, are in, who work in it. So uh, it's always a pleasure to work with, you, with her. So I must say that. Too. Thank you both for, feel ta it. for talking to us after having flown 22 hours and just having arrived last <laughs> night, so that's the first thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we might finish up there. I just wanted to remind everyone that this season will kick off on uh, the 7th of November and run through until the 17th. As we've heard, it's two amazing productions, Don Quixote and Giselle. And uh, in addition to that, there's... I might say, a fabulous program of events and activities that will be sitting around the season as well, including a simulcast to several uh, cities across regional Queensland, which is amazing. Uh, thank you, Mrs. De Freida, Maestro. Okay, so oh. Now, I forget to say, Sophie, that there will be some, uh, some guests, some guests uh, yeah. in, this, in this tour. Oh. There will be David Alberg and uh, will be Maria Eschwald That's and Leonid Zarafanov. But uh, the interesting thing that they will dance not uh, with us, they will be in each guest, uh, we dance with one uh, principal dancer of our company, Ooh. so that it will be... They don't know yet, still. <laughs> so, too. So, so, just kind of silence okay. stays in the room. But it's important well, to, well, some, no, to have this uh, very great yeah. dancer to be part with us for, for a moment. It will be a pushing uh, a booster for the company, always. Oh. We were already pretty that. excited, so I think the level's just taken it up a notch there. So uh, we will finish up. Can I say thank you, Mrs. De Freida, Maestro Olivieri, <laughs> John and Francesca. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today. Um, if I could ask you all to join me in thanking all of our guests. Yeah. Yeah.